Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum dear students. Uh, this lecture is a continuation of our previous discussion on absolute stability. So if you remember we were discussing the global exponential stability of a feedback system where we have uh, a non-linearity in the feedback loop of a linear time invariant uh, system. So the problem statement was uh, to find the conditions under which the above feedback system is globally asymptotically or globally exponentially stable uh, and uh, the assumptions are that the g of s is an lti system and uh, phi of t comma y is a sector nonlinearity so if you uh, want to refresh yourself about what uh, what a sector nonlinearity is i recommend that you go to the previous lecture of this topic and uh, there we discuss the sector nonlinearity in detail so right now uh, i'll just uh, briefly remind you that the final uh, discussion of the last lecture re uh, regarding this topic was Eisenman conjecture and Eisenman conjecture uh, state uh, Eisenman conjecture says that uh, a feedback system is absolutely stable if and only if the sector nonlinearity is time invariant and it belongs to a Hurwitz sector. Um, remember that we discussed last time that this Eisenman conjecture was uh, proven wrong by Pliss uh, with a counter example uh, where the Pliss proposed a special system with the feedback uh, sector nonlinearity where the sector was uh, Hurwitz uh, but the um, there was a cyclic uh, solution in the system so it could not have been globally exponentially stable. Um, so uh, after Eisenman, uh, there was another attempt to propose a solution for this problem. Here I just want to remind you that uh, the sector nonlinearity belonging to Hurwitz sector is a necessary condition. And Eisenman added the, uh, the condition of time invariance on the nonlinearity to and thought that adding this condition would convert uh, the necessary condition into the sufficient one. Um, so uh, then there was Kalman conjecture. Uh, Kalman uh, proposed the same thing as the Eisenman. Uh, he, he also proposed that if the sector nonlinearity is time invariant and the sector is Hurwitz, then the, the nonlinear feedback system would be uh, globally exponentially stable. But Kalman, of course, uh, Eisenman conjecture had been proven wrong. So Kalman added an extra condition that there has to be some bound on the uh, rate of change of uh, nonlinearity. So the slope of nonlinearity had to be bounded. Uh, between uh, the constants k1 and k2 which are the upper and lower uh, bound on the slope of the sector uh, the Hurwitz sector in which the nonlinearity is enclosed uh, this was um, a quite um, smart um, uh, conjecture by Kalman and uh, many of the systems uh, which uh, uh, exist in uh, real life uh, actually they um, satisfy this uh, criteria but nobody could prove this conjecture to be correct and finally uh, there was a counter example given by some researcher I don't know the name right now uh, but they they gave a counter example uh, by give, proposing the system that is uh, really, uh, visible on your screens right now and with this transfer function uh, constants alpha and beta um, if you uh, take the nonlinearity to be k times y cube then uh, for uh, small enough alpha and beta uh, it can be shown that uh, uh, by appropriate choice of k a limit cycle would exist in the system uh, which would ensure that uh, global uh, exponential stability is not possible. So this was a counter example for Kalman conjecture and uh, well uh, we have discussed uh, a couple of failed attempts uh, to solve this problem and let us now discuss the one attempt that actually uh, was proven to be uh, the correct solution for this problem. So. Um, 
in order to find the solution finally the the system had to be converted into state space and if you convert this uh, given system into state space uh, then uh, you get like x dot equal ax plus bu and y is equal to cx that's the linear state space uh, for the g of s and uh, the feedback is a nonlinear feedback so u is equal to a nonlinear function minus phi of t comma y so it's like a linear system with nonlinear control and uh, uh, here uh, I will just show the solution of this problem for a special case where uh, phi belongs to uh, a sector starting from zero to some positive value beta and uh, ABC matrices are basically the matrices that are um, that will give you the same transfer function as uh, there is in the original system so for this system if you uh, take the Lyapunov approach uh, then um, using the quadratic Lyapunov function that is standard for linear systems uh, you can actually show that uh, this feedback system is globally exponentially stable under the following conditions so what are the conditions the conditions are a b pair has to be controllable and the a c pair has to be observable I'm assuming at this point that you all know what uh, the definition of controllability and observability are and how to calculate controllability and observability. Uh, but it is important, also important to know that if a transfer function, if, if ABC is a minimal state space realization, uh, then uh, a minimal realization is always controllable and observable. Uh, which in other words, you can say that if there are no pole zero cancellations in the transfer function, then its state space will be controllable and observable. So condition one and condition two basically translate to the uh, fact that if you are given a transfer function g of s, there should not be any pole zero cancellations in it. Um, and if it is a transfer function matrix, then um, you can convert it into state space and uh, find the conditions on controllability and observability on a b pair and a c pair and the third condition that is required for absolute stability is identity plus beta times uh, c into s i minus a inverse b is uh, should be strictly positive real so in this lecture i will also uh, tell you how to determine whether some transfer function is strictly positive real or not uh, here I want to emphasize that the condition 3 basically is, is says that identity plus beta times the transfer function g of s uh, which is like identity plus beta times g of s is in itself a transfer function or if, if g of s is a transfer function matrix then this will be a transfer function matrix. So the transfer function matrix in uh, so condition 3 requires that a certain transfer function matrix which is uh, 1 plus beta times the original transfer function uh, of the system uh, should be strictly positive real. If these three conditions are satisfied, then for the sector nonlinearities, uh, the closed loop system would be globally exponentially stable. So this is a mathematical, mathematically proven result. Uh, but uh, up to this point, we have only discussed it for a special case. And the special case is that uh, this phi of uh, t comma y this belongs to the sector which starts from zero so it's a sec uh, so what happens if uh, the sector does not start from zero if, if the sector is alpha b alpha comma beta sector so for the general case uh, we um, use some simplification and uh, some uh, um, mathematical techniques uh, to uh, show you what is the uh, general solution of this problem okay so for uh, the generalization of the sector of uh, for the generalization of the solution that I presented in the previous slide um, to include the sector of the form alpha comma beta uh, we use a technique called loop transformation so what does a loop transformation do let let me show you here that uh, on the left hand side you have the original uh, single loop transfer function uh, single loop uh, feedback uh, control system uh, but on the right hand side there is an equivalent 
uh, feedback control system uh, i say equivalent because if you find if you calculate the transfer function of both the feedback control diagrams uh, the transfer function will turn out to be the same i have just introduced two additional uh, loops uh, of uh, each with a feedback alpha on the right hand side uh, one is with the g of s so i have introduced an additional uh, g of s uh, uh, additional feedback alpha uh, from the output of g of s to, uh, into the input of g of s uh, and then i have also introduced uh, the same feedback alpha uh, from the input of the uh, nonlinearity to the output of the nonlinearity. So, uh, why do we do this? Uh, we do this because uh, we want to find, uh, you know, if uh, so, we want to um, basically if if I uh, capture this uh, G of S and alpha feedback loop and call it uh, g sub t of s and uh, also i capture this uh, nonlinearity with alpha loop uh, and call it uh, phi sub t as uh, t of uh, t comma y then <coughs> uh, basically this uh, phi of phi sub t uh, will belong to the sector uh, that starts from zero and that would be 0 to beta minus alpha so i have converted uh, um, a, a transfer function with uh, sector nonlinearity into another transfer function and uh, another sector nonlinearity uh, such that uh, the overall system remains the same but the equivalent uh, sector nonlinearity uh, has uh, the sector has been basically shifted from alpha comma beta to 0 0 comma beta minus alpha so i have just shifted the sector of the nonlinearity um, so i have copied the diagram from the previous slide in on onto this slide and uh, now if you if i have to write the equation for this uh, phi sub t uh, so phi sub t is equal to original phi which belongs to the sector alpha comma beta minus alpha times y uh, so this i have written this equation in time domain uh, which does not make any uh, which does not uh, it still this equation applies uh, because although the diagram is in laplace domain uh, so if uh, if y of t like small y is the inverse laplace of capital y signal then this is the equation for phi sub t okay so phi sub t belongs to the sector 0 comma beta minus alpha okay uh, and then g sub t its transfer function you can see that uh, the, it would be g of s into identity plus alpha times g of s whole inverse so these are the uh, expressions for um, my transformation, uh, my transformed uh, nonlinearity and transformed uh, LTI system. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, I've copied these expressions onto the next slide. Uh, if you look at uh, the, ori uh, the original system now, with uh, x dot equal ax plus bu y is equal to cx which is the uh, state space of uh, g of s and then u is the control input uh, which i put it equal to the nonlinearity and the nonlinearity belongs to the sector alpha comma beta this is equivalent to uh, x dot equal ax plus uh, ax uh, minus b into phi uh, phi of t comma y uh, minus sign comes from uh, the fact that u is equal to minus phi of t comma y and i have just added and subtracted the term alpha y uh, so i have added plus alpha y and minus alpha y so it does not change the system uh, so what does this do is um, so it gives me a new equation uh, x dot equal 
a minus alpha times b c x so c comes from the fact that y is equal to c x so i have substituted y is equal to c x uh, in the y that appears uh, in the x dot equation uh, so then I get um, uh, x dot equal a minus alpha uh, b c times x minus b times uh, phi sub t of t comma y. Now phi sub t is phi minus alpha y as uh, is written on the top of the slide. So I have substituted the phi sub t expression uh, in the x dot equation. And also uh, the u bar is, and so I have defined the uh, the the control signal to be minus uh, phi sub t of t comma y and now this uh, sector nonlinearity belongs to uh, the zero comma beta minus alpha sector and this C system is equivalent to the original system so what i have done is i have converted the original system where nonlinearity belongs to the sector alpha comma beta into uh, an equivalent nonlinear system, uh, um, a linear system with nonlinear non feedback, uh, where the nonlinear feedback belongs to the sector zero comma beta minus alpha. So this um, arrangement allows me to use the results that I, I have already discussed with you into the uh, this uh, general system. So I've repeated the equivalence between two systems uh, on this slide and then uh, fol following facts are useful for understanding the final results that I will be presenting to you in the next slide. So what are the facts? The first of all the fact is that uh, if you are determining the controllability of A minus alpha times B C comma B the controllability of this pair is equivalent to controllability of a comma b and similarly the observability of a minus alpha b c comma c a is equivalent to the observability of a comma c so uh, this these uh, fact number one and two basically uh, uh, come from um, come from the fact that uh, feedback does not change the controllability or observability property so if a system is controllable and observable uh, the the then adding feedback to that system does not change its property of controllability of uh, or observability um, so the third uh, third fact that is useful to understand the final result is a b c if a b c is a minimal realization of the transfer function then a minus alpha times b um, c is Hurwitz if and only if uh, this g sub t which is uh, c into si minus a minus alpha b c whole inverse into b is bibo stable uh, so all it is saying is that um, this would uh, require an additional condition for absolute stability that this um, this transfer function g sub t that we have defined uh, it should be bibo stable for achieving absolute uh, stability because that is required for the sector to be all right so uh, now that we have uh, discussed uh, certain things that would uh, um, prepare you for the general results i finally present the circle criteria for general case where the nonlinearity belongs to the sector alpha comma beta the feedback system is globally exponentially stable if number one ab is controllable and number two if ac is observable and number three if uh, g multiplied by identity plus alpha times g of s whole inverse is bibo stable now this g of s multiplied by i plus alpha times g of s in whole inverse this is g sub t this is the same transfer function that we defined uh, earlier which was uh, um, uh, shown in the previous slide as well 
uh, and the fourth condition is that identity plus beta times g of s uh, multiplied by identity plus alpha times g of s whole inverse should be strictly positive real so these are four conditions that uh, are necessary and sufficient um, for the uh, sector nonlinearity uh, feedback system to be globally exponentially stable uh, so uh, i repeat the conditions that uh, first of all you have to see that uh, a b pair should be controllable second a c pair should be observable third the transfer function g of s multiply by identity plus alpha into g of s whole inverse should be bio stable and the fourth and final condition is that identity plus beta g of s multiply by identity plus alpha g of s inverse should be strictly positive real so now that we have discussed the circle criteria uh, and uh, which basically provides us conditions for the uh, feedback system with nonlinearity uh, sector nonlinearity to be absolutely stable uh, we look at uh, how to determine if a transfer function matrix is strictly positive real or not i recommend you uh, look into the textbook for the definition of uh, strictly positive real transfer function matrix uh, i just want to remind you that the thing i am going to discuss here is not the definition of strictly positive real it is just the method of finding out whether a transfer function is strictly positive real or not because uh, for our purposes this calculation is important and uh, here it goes an n cross n pro pro proper rational transfer function matrix g of s is strictly positive real if and only if first of all you have to see that g of s should be hurwitz so all of its uh, poles uh, the poles of all of its elements uh, should be on the open left half plane on the open left half side of the complex plane so uh, second condition is that the g of j omega plus the transpose of g of minus j omega should be strictly positive for all values of omega in real numbers third condition is that g at infinity plus g transpose at infinity should be greater than zero so if you put in infinity instead of s uh, then uh, g plus g transpose should uh, give you a positive value okay so uh, for most cases uh, or for our purposes uh, the transfer function will be a scalar so for scalar case the above conditions uh, simplify a little bit and uh, you first have to check uh, that g of s if it is a single transfer function instead of being a transfer function matrix uh, g of s you first have to check whether it's hurwitz or not uh, you can check that by verifying whether its uh, poles are on the open left half uh, side of the um, complex plane uh, second condition you have to check is the real part of the g of j omega should be positive for all the positive values of omega and then um, including zero so real part of g of j omega should be positive for all omega between zero and infinity and for for s equal to infinity g of infinity should be greater than zero so these are three conditions for scalar transfer function to be strictly positive real so now that we have discussed the um, this circle criteria and we have discussed how to determine whether a transfer function is strictly positive real or not i think we are ready to do a couple of examples so first i give you an example where the nonlinearity is phi of y is equal to y when y magnitude is less than 1 and phi of y is equal to y over magnitude of y when y magnitude is greater than 1 so this is typical saturation nonlinearity uh, where it gives um, uh, and also notice that this nonlinearity is time invariant and uh, uh, the transfer function that i uh, give use in this example is g of s equal s plus 1 divided by s plus 2 this is a first order transfer function very simple so we should be easily able to solve this example and determine whether this uh, 
uh, feedback system uh, with this given transfer function and the given nonlinearity whether it is absolutely stable or not so uh, to solve this uh, first of all we have to see that the nonlinearity is a saturation function and this, if you draw this saturation function you will see that the slope of uh, like the sector in which you can enclose this nonlinearity is 0 0 and 1 so 0 comma 1 or you can say that the sector uh, is between 0 and 1 um, you can also uh, revisit my previous lecture on this topic and see I have discussed sector non, uh, saturation nonlinearities there uh, so, uh, since the sector is starting from zero, uh, we don't need to check four conditions, we only need to check three conditions. And out of those three conditions, the controllability and observability are trivially satisfied because you can see that there is no pole zero cancellation in the transfer function. So, its state space is will naturally be uh, controllable and observable. Uh, uh, finally, the strictly positive real condition uh, also needs to be checked, uh, is needed to be checked. Um, so how do we check this strictly positive real condition? Uh, first of all, we need to see that whether this transfer function is Hurwitz. So we come back and see that uh, this the pole is at minus 2. Uh, there is only one pole in the transfer function and that is at minus 2 so uh, this is Hurwitz transfer function uh, second is that the real part is uh, one half uh, g of j omega plus g of minus j omega uh, which we calculate to be 0.5 into 4 plus 2 omega square divided by 2 plus omega square which you, you can easily verify that it is positive for all values of omega between 0 and infinity uh, finally, the G of infinity is 1 and uh, you cannot find G of infinity directly here. You have to use the L'Hopital rule. L'Hopital rule says that if uh, you are trying to find the limit of a function uh, of a ratio of two functions such that uh, if you uh, put the limit right away then the ratio becomes infinity over infinity or 0 over infinity or infinity over 0 or 0 over 0 then you can find uh, the uh, limit by taking the derivatives of the functions uh, you, I encourage you to revisit the L'Hopital rule and you will see how I have calculated uh, the uh, limit here so um, in short, in summary, uh, we have checked all the conditions of absolute stability and we conclude that the system G of S equal S plus 1 over S plus 2 uh, with the feedback nonlinearity that is saturation nonlinearity, uh, that this feedback system is absolutely stable according to circle. Okay, next we look at uh, one more example. Uh, to make sure that we understand how to calculate absolute stability for a feedback system. So consider that there is a nonlinearity which belongs to the sector 1 comma 3 and here uh, I have chosen uh, the general um, system uh, the nonlinearity that belongs to a sector which does not start from 0 so that we check all four conditions of the circle criteria. And the transfer function is 2 over s square plus 2s plus 2. It's a second order transfer function. And uh, we want to figure out whether this feedback system with sector nonlinearity is uh, absolutely stable or not. So first of all, we see that uh, since the transfer function is irreducible, uh, controllability and observability conditions are uh, trivially satisfied. So we just need to uh, look at the remaining two conditions. Uh, the third condition is that G of S into I plus identity plus alpha times G of S inverse uh, that has to be BIBOS uh, stable. Uh, here since the transfer function is scalar identity becomes 1. So the whole expression becomes uh, the G of S divided by 1 plus alpha times g of s here you can see that alpha is equal to 1 because <coughs> <coughs> excuse me alpha is equal to 1 because uh, the sector that we are considering here is 1 comma 3 so sector starts with 1 uh, so 
simplifying this uh, g of s into uh, i plus alpha g s inverse we see that uh, this uh, simplifies to 2 divided by s square plus 2 s plus 4 and if you apply the Routh Hurwitz criteria for stability on this uh, transfer function uh, since this is a second order transfer function the necessary and sufficient conditions for its poles to be on the open left half side of the complex plane is that all the coefficients uh, must have the same sign so here the coefficients of s square s and the constant coefficient all are positive uh, so we are uh, sure that uh, the poles of this second order transfer function are in the open left half plane so since that ensures asymptotic stability and asymptotic stability implies bi bibo stability uh, so uh, this uh, transfer function is bibo stable so we have satisfied three out of four criteria finally we look at this criteria of uh, one plus uh, beta times g of s multiplied by identity plus alpha times g of s whole inverse uh, so we when we plug in the values of alpha and beta and g of s uh, we uh, come to the system which uh, which is s square plus 2s plus 8 divided by s square plus 2s plus 4 and now this system is strictly positive real because uh, when we check the three conditions of uh, uh, this system being strictly positive real first condition is that it should be Hurwitz and we can see that it, it indeed is Hurwitz because it has the same poles as the original transfer function which we already have uh, discussed that it is Hurwitz uh, second uh, we look at the real part of this transfer function and the real part turns out to be if you do some simplifications and multiplications then the real part turns out to be 4 minus omega square whole square divided by 4 minus omega square whole square plus omega square so everything in this uh, final expression is a square of uh, something so squares are positive uh, by uh, we know for fact that square of any number is any real number is positive so we can easily state here that the ratio of the positive numbers is also positive so this uh, real part of the transfer function is positive the transfer function is Hurwitz finally we check uh, if we put limit s approaches infinity and apply the L'Hopital rule here we will have to take the derivative uh, twice uh, but it's um, it's not that hard you can take the derivative even if you take the derivative one time uh, the ratio will become 2s plus 2 divided by 2s plus 2 which will cancel out to be 1 and 1 is independent of s so if you put limit s approaches infinity to 1 then 1 remains 1 so 1 is greater than 0 so we have verified all three conditions for strictly positive real and uh, so <coughs> excuse me so with that we have established that this uh, feedback uh, control system with uh, the transfer function 2 divided by s square plus 2s plus 2 and the non-linearity that belongs to the sector uh, 1 comma 3 uh, is actually absolutely stable absolutely stable means that it is globally exponentially stable uh, notice here that uh, we did not we did not need to know the exact mathematical equation for nonlinearity. All we needed to know is that uh, the sector that it belongs to. So uh, this is one uh, uh, you can say the privilege uh, of uh, this uh, method that we can uh, actually do calculations without knowing the. Uh, exact mathematical equation of the nonlinearity as long as we know for sure uh, the sector to which it belongs so this is all about uh, absolute stability um, and uh, I hope you were able to understand uh, most of uh, this concept I just uh, revise uh, at the end of the lecture I'll just give you uh, one more time I'll, I'll, I want to give you this completed uh, uh, circle criteria uh, this is this is our circle criteria uh, that uh, for us system uh, 
uh, with sector non-linearity uh, you have to check basically four conditions in order to determine whether this system is absolutely stable or not uh, first condition is that AB pair should be controllable and AC pair should be observable. So these two conditions basically require that uh, um, for a scalar transfer function they require that there is no pole zero cancellation. Uh, but for the matrix transfer function uh, you have to check this uh, with the proper definitions of controllability and observability. Uh, third condition is that GS multiplied by identity plus alpha times G of S in whole inverse should be BIBO stable. We have looked at a, an example of uh, how to do this at least for the scalar case. Similar calculations can be done for the, uh, uh, for the matrix G of S as well. And um, then fourth condition is that identity plus beta times G of S. A multiply by identity plus alpha times g of s whole inverse this should be strictly positive real uh, so this was uh, circle criteria and these were the examples example one example two and uh, now i'll just uh, finish this lecture here you can post your comments and uh, contact me regarding any questions that you might have regarding this lecture thank you so much